in a world full of Microsoft operating systems. Each one fights to the death to see who comes out as the best. Which one will be the ultimate champion? Come on guys, it's obviously Windows ME. So tier lists, we've heard of them before. Well, there are so many videos on YouTube like, you know, making tier lists about a variety of topics like the best tier list, I don't even know what that means. Other people's tier list, video game tier list. Of course, there's, you know, there's the, the all nations tier list. There's the Smash Bros tier list. There's so many tier lists. But what I haven't seen before is a Windows operating or Windows desktop operating system tier list. We're going to go ahead and make a tier list about all the major Windows desktop operating systems. We're not doing like Windows Whistler. We're not doing like, you know, like, I don't know, like, Windows 8, um, actually, we're doing Windows 8, uh, let's not do Windows 8. So let's go to tierlessmaker.com, make your own template, describe the image, Windows Desktop OS tier list. Yep, that's cool. What, is there like, uh, is there technology, Techno yep, there you go, technology, description, rank all the Windows Desktop operating systems. Must be logged in to create a new template. Okay, uh, I guess we have to create an account. Let's log in. Alright, so after some time, I've came to the conclusion that we're not going to be able to use the tier list to make our website because I can't make an account and I can't really do anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use paint.net and we're going to make a tier list by dragging images here. So we got S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, and F tier. I took some random template and just edited it and you know, there you go. We got an image. I added some images here. So this is 1.0, 2.0, 3.11, 95, NT 4.0, 98, 2000. ME, XP, Vista, 7, 8.1, and 10. We're not adding 8 because 8 is just like, it's just the original version of Windows 8.1. It's not really its own operating system. So, yeah, it's just an update. So, Windows 1.0. How do I even explain this? So, the thing with this operating system is that, like, for example, everything is just not polished enough. So, like, instead of just clicking the button, and opening a menu like you have to hold your mouse and then try and and then like move your mouse and then let go it's like it's kind of weird and it doesn't really work well I, I really don't like it also multitasking was really limited like you can't overlap windows which is kind of weird to be honest you have to like i mean they're kind of like tiles just like when you multitask with like windows 8 or something or something like that like tablet mode and windows and, and yeah this it's it's a bit janky to be honest but this was like the first op microsoft operating system to use like a real graphical user interface and you know everything was so much easier to use because remember ms dos where you had to like write directory and then when like you have to remember all these random commands and it was really complicated for computer beginners which is why this operating system had a lot of potential but then again it wasn't really remembered that fondly because i mean it had potential it focused too much on the pointer functionality which wasn't really necessary for an operating system operating system like this it was too new it was kind of ahead of its time but not in a good way um, there's a lot of factors. It was the first one, but there are definitely problems, but it did have a lot of potential. See, I can't put B. I'll put C, because I'm nice. C tier. Alright, first operating system down. Let's move on. And uh, actually, while we do that, let's explore. Alright, what programs? Is that calculator? That's cool. I don't know if the first one... Yeah, yeah, I think C tier is perfect for this. I mean, it had a bunch of preloaded programs. This literally didn't change for so long. This is so cool. Like, <laughs> why isn't this changed? Um, yeah. Yeah, this is multitasking. I don't- I can't imagine multitasking. Like, why is- 
Why is there two MS DOS? I'm so confused. You know what? We're moving on. All right, Windows 2.0. This was a huge improvement from Windows 1.0. So, firstly, there are actual windows, and you know that's great. You can overlap windows, and also these programs, like these programs like Calculator and Clock, they don't take up the whole screen, which is great. Like you don't need one program to take up a whole screen. Like, also, you can minimize and maximize windows now. I mean, that was a thing in Windows 1.0, but like it was so much easier to do right here. And additionally, it introduced a bunch of really, really useful keyboard shortcuts. Um, I don't think I know a bunch about a lot of them. Maybe I can try and figure them out. There were definitely a lot of keyboard shortcuts introduced. There's actual windows, there's actually minimize and maximize. Even those three factors made this such an improvement over the first version of Windows. I remember when the clock took up the whole screen and it's so much easier to multitask. You can overlap windows now. That's actually great. Definitely the next version of Windows was really, really good. I'm going to put this on B tier just because it was pretty similar to Windows 1.0, but at the same time, it introduced some- Oh yeah, it also introduced a control panel, I'm pretty sure. I think so, right? Control.exe? No, no, yeah, control panel. This was, man, this made adjusting settings so much easier. All right, 3.11. Right, this was a really, really popular version of Windows. Um, yeah, let's check this out. All right, we got an actual boot screen. This overall, this user interface was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, so this version of Windows introduced a bunch of icons. See, file manager, you know, you got the... You were into Windows 2.0. Yeah, look, this looks really similar. You got some icons that actually showed you, you know, that gave you, so like, you know, the folder, if you don't know what the folder looks like, there's a folder, you know, you got EXEs. These, this made distinguishing between files a lot easier, so you know what an EXE is, a BMP is, you know, folders. Um, yeah, this looks like something from the registry, and this looks like something from Windows Explorer, so like, this is registry and Windows Explorer. Uh, when you think about it like that. So the file explorer was definitely way more improved And we also got a bunch of other things like you know, the control panel Which was this was a lot easier to use and uh, overall I just the icon this user interface was so easy like everything from just file managing to adjusting settings It was way easier and in addition to that this operating system sold so well like even that itself, it should get a good ranking. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely getting. I can't put B again because this was way. This make this was such a huge improvement. So, well, why not? Why not put you know A A? Yeah, let's put A. Just because S, I feel like that would be like you know introducing something completely new. This was this retained like, or like something completely new that the general public really liked. So. We're putting A because it's it's still a bit similar to Windows 1.0 and 2.0, but at the same time, it just improved everything about Windows. It made everything so much easier to use. And it gets better with the newer versions of Windows. Let's check out Windows 95. Windows 95. This was... Oh man, this was an operating system. We had the introduction of the internet, this, and the user interface was so easy. It, it couldn't have gotten easier than this. We still have the same user interface in Windows 7. We have, you know, the recycling bin. Uh, we have the recycling bin right there. We got, you know, my computer. I can add that, but like, yeah, we'll just like, you know, my computer. So we have a start button. Oh yeah, this introduced so much. This was, man, that was, th th it's such a small addition, but it just made everything so easy. Look, you can just pin everything you need from here. That was cool. It, it doesn't sound amazing, but it really was. General consumers definitely saw that this was a lot easier to use, this, especially the start menu. Man, th this was this was the thing. Everything we retained everything from Windows 3.11, except everything was so much more expanded upon. This whole new user interface, it was just so much better. See, we still have a proper file manager. In fact, it's even easier to use because everything, you know, everything was um, is not just a huge list of things. This was this has some a variety of icons that tells you, you know, what program you're using. Oh yeah, and there's also yeah, you know, it's the sub menus. Yeah, this is this was such a great operating system. 
Yeah, we're putting Windows 95 and A tier as well. Very, very good. Um, very, very good. Of course, I'm not putting anything on S tier because that's like, you know, super popular, like best operating systems of all time, you know, kind of deal. So, yeah, it, I honestly think that it was just on the level as Windows 3.11 and Windows 9. Like, they're, I feel like they're equal level. Um, I'm not going to put on S tier just because, like, the future entries of Windows just made everything so much better. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to move on to Windows NT4. I really don't know how to rank this. <laughs> now, hear me out. Um, this is really similar to Windows 95. It's no longer MS-DOS based. I feel like it was too early to really be NT based. And, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure there were a lot of people who were still using Windows or MS-DOS. I mean, this is command prompt. This isn't, like, proper, you know, Windows, Windows like, MS-DOS. So, I don't know. I don't know if the community was really ready for this, the, you know, the Windows community. I really don't know how to rank this. I honestly don't. It's kind of hard to rank this. Uh, I don't know. It's the same thing. I don't know what to say. It's kind of the same thing. Oh, gosh. What do I say? Um... I mean, we can go to documents, you know, I'll go to programs. Oh gosh, um, my computer. It's like the same thing, guys. What do I say? It's a C drive. I, I need to learn things as well. Um, oh god. Yeah, see, look, MS DOS is like not working. So this is NT based, but this didn't really do much for the consumer. And I don't know. I did some research, and I definitely know that NT was a step up from MS-DOS, but I feel like it was just too early, and it didn't really do much. I mean, it was still a good operating system. I'm gonna put it on C tier. Yeah, you're putting it on C tier. Not really impressive. At least for me. I mean, obviously, these are my opinions. You can't really, you can't really blame me for my opinion, but yeah, I, I'm still learning. Alright, next up is Windows 98. Yeah, this was... We're doing second edition. I don't know. I just feel like doing second edition. Um, we're doing the definitive version of Windows 98. We're just gonna ignore the original. Oh man, I love this operating system. Dude, it's so cool. All right, so we got the we got the introduction of the quick access toolbar. So you know we could you know we could you know, we could use we could just launch things from here. It's basically a bunch of shortcuts. All right, so um, Outlook came with email like outlook express it, it came with that stuff yeah that so that's pretty cool i'm not gonna lie the file explorer in windows 95 was good but this just made it a lot better i mean this looks a lot more familiar uh you know we got the settings settings were pretty easy to use control panel yep we have a bunch more settings to use everything is just so much more refined this is amazing and overall i i believe that this was like i mean Windows 95, I mean, that was, without a doubt, that was pretty good. But when we take a look at Windows 98, I mean, that just blows, like, all the previous versions of Windows out of the way. Like, you got a bunch of stuff, and it still uses MS-DOS, which is pretty cool. Um, and, yeah, that's about it for Windows 98. Um, and this operating system sold very well Non, i don't know which one 98 or 98 se but overall this was a very very popular version of windows it refined a lot of things i'm putting this on s, s tier all right windows 98 s tier also i put it on s tier because you know people in the comments are gonna get mad at me if i put 98 any lower than s tier so yeah all right 2000 uh, Windows 2000 was pretty good, to be honest. I think, yeah, it also uses NT, but it has all the features of Windows 98 as well. So, yeah, and it was built on NT technology, which was pretty cool. It was great. Got a... Oh, man, we got a great startup sound. I love that startup sound. We got updated icons. We got all the new additions, just like Windows 98. Yeah, just like Windows 98, except it's built on NT. Yeah, this is getting really difficult to rank. Yeah, guys, I really don't know how... If I rank this wrong, I'm sorry, but, like, I don't know how to rank 2000. I really like 2000, but, like, I don't know why I like 2000. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's kind of great explanation, me.
So, yeah, it was... Alright, so, yeah, it was a bunch of small features, but nothing really for the consumer to really notice. Like, it's, it's NT, but what more is there? Um, yeah, I'm gonna be fair and rank 2,000... Uh, I'm gonna put B tier just because NT 4.0 just wasn't exciting at all. At least in 2000 had a different user interface, I could tell you that. Like, the theme and the, you know, it was a bit more refined. I don't know why I keep saying refined, but yeah. We'll put it on B tier. Alright, Windows ME. Oh god, do I even need to explain what this is? What is this?! Alright, next up, Windows XP. Introduced a whole lot of things, made it so much easier for like, you know, like custom consumers, like this is regular consumers, not like just for businesses. Like, got two columns in the start menu firstly, you got a completely different user interface, or at least different theme. I mean, you know, you got, you, you have the sub menu with all your programs. That was pretty useful. You can switch between users. What? Automatic updates? I thought I updated already. So if there were multiple users on this computer, you could log off and if someone else wanted to use the computer, you could go on to their user without affecting what the other person was doing before. So yeah, that was really useful. The log on screen was completely different unless you wanted to change it in the settings. Uh, we got some really cool system sounds. Like the whole system sounds were complete. The system sounds were completely different. The whole user interface was greatly changed. So overall, I thinking about it, the whole user interface, I mean, this whole operating system seems really similar to Windows 2000, so I don't know. Ranking this on S tier would be kind of unusual. Hold on, guys. This game comes with 3D Pinball, one of the best games of all time. Windows XP is getting S tier. Okay, I'm just kidding. Windows XP was going to get S tier. The thing about me saying that Windows 2000 is too similar, this, this was one of the biggest leaps forward from windows in such a long time like the last thing that really leaped forward was windows 90 windows 3.11 to windows 95 windows xp introduced a whole lot new features in addition to a completely new user interface it sold extremely well and was definitely known as one of microsoft's best operating systems i feel like it makes sense to put it on s tier all right next up windows vista a lot of people say windows vista was a failure and i could kind of understand that but man i will defend vista to death all right firstly you know we got that boot up screen that was pretty fast so yeah th so the first thing you will probably notice immediately after going from xp to vista is the new windows arrow interface this was so i mean it wasn't necessary but it looked so cool oh god i need to activate windows um let's just pretend i never did that okay i gotta admit vista had a terrible launch it just was so glitchy, so many blue screens, the system requirements were just too high for the older laptops running Windows XP. Overall, it just it wasn't a good launch, and that was mostly because of the rushed development of Windows Longhorn. Overall, they just focused too much on the features, and not too much on stability and uh, bug fixes. Of course, that changed with Service Pack 1 and 2, but that, didn't really, that doesn't really matter for this ranking. I mean... We're talking about just the whole timeline of Windows. We're just talking overall. And Vista definitely ranks lower just because of that. But what I will defend is the features. Vista introduced so many features that just made Windows, Windows what this is today. This looks so similar to Windows 7. Like, it's just, it's a joke that this looks like Windows 7. It's too much like Windows 7. The user interface is the same as Windows 7. The system sounds like arrow this is like one of the, so seven has arrow the vista has arrow the, the icons are the same you got i mean transparency affects everywhere like it's it's pretty strange when you think about it um this operating system introduced a lot of course the start menu functionality wise it did stay pretty much the same but you got this old programs menu which doesn't it's not like um it doesn't stick out like the sub menus there aren't like there aren't like sub menus that are sticking out everywhere. Um, now it's just you know you click this button and all your programs here, which I do prefer. And if you want to go to a folder, it just makes a lot more sense. Def we got this search. This is I need this. Like I need search. I need this 
if I don't have my search functionality for my start menu, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, we this is definitely significant, and this was a really good feature. Additionally, like you know, the Windows uh, Update Center. If I go to updates. Uh, instead of just instead of it being like uh, Internet Explorer like you have to go to the web This is literally integrated into Windows. So now it's like its own program with integrated into Windows You don't have to go to Internet. Ex I don't I think it's like Internet You have to it's like uses like Internet Explorer to get updates. This is its own, you know program integrated into the start menu. Oh, yeah, and also um, Control panel was definitely definitely improved as well look at this this looks pretty organized everything from just everything just feels very organized oh yeah and also the addition of gadgets and sidebars that you either hated or you liked because i mean for some people it just got in the way for some people it was really useful personally i liked them oh yeah and the windows explorer the windows explorer was so much better in this version of windows like if we go here you know now instead of instead of having text here you know you have this you know you have this organized navigation you even have your favorite links here where you can just go to your shortcuts and you have you know your information right here but yeah this definitely had some problems during launch it did get addressed in the future you know updates and service packs and i honestly would put this on c tier just because it just wasn't just because like the launch just just gave terrible first impressions and overall this didn't even sell well and yeah that's just that it just was buggy it was unstable during launch and and then when service pack 1 came out service pack 3 for windows xp came out so people didn't even bother to upgrade and then when service pack 2 came out Windows Windows 7 was about to launch so there was no point in buying Windows Vista people could just get Windows 7 Windows 7 is extremely similar to Windows Vista. It really is, except the taskbar was different and it removed the sidebar. So in some ways, there are advantages and disadvantages of Windows 7 if you prefer it or if you don't prefer it. But this was when this was really what Windows Vista should have been. I feel like I feel like if they just I feel like this was just a more refined version of Windows Vista. It's just so similar, and I really don't understand. Uh, why they had to release it like this like nothing almost nothing was changed of course there was a different background there was a different taskbar uh, but it was just really similar to Windows Vista and I I gotta criticize it for that it's just pretty funny honestly that this is this is this is too similar okay for it being not in your face all the time with like future versions of Windows I appreciate Windows 7 just because I've used future win versions of Windows. I've used Windows 8 and Windows 10. We'll get to that later, but my god, like there it's not in your face. You don't get random updates that happen without your consent. It's there isn't like bloatware. It just has everything you need in it. And of course this applies for Vista as well, but I feel like Windows 7 is just so much more refined. It sold so much more it's so much so much it sold so much better it was better received by the overall microsoft community that i think that it deserves an s tier just because of how it's still used by so many people today it's like almost windows 10 of course of course it's gonna end support soon but i gotta appreciate windows 7 for what it is it may, might be biased it, but honestly it's still used today it's not in your face all the time it's more refined than Vista, and it's used by so many people. I'm gonna, I gotta give it uh, S tier just because of how how usable it is. Like overall, just how usable it is. I can totally understand how people might be mad because like how many uh, features aren't present in Windows Vista. But when you think about it, it just this op this version of Windows. It's just so much more usable and isn't in your face all the time. And it, it had a great launch. It had a great launch. It is stable and it had little to no bugs. And lots of legacy programs can still run on Windows 7 but not Windows 8.1 or 10. It's just still used by so many people today. It doesn't update randomly. It doesn't have a bunch of preloaded apps. 
and it was just more stable it was just more stable and secure it was just more stable than vista and it had a better launch than vista the reason why i ranked windows vista as c tier is because the launch was just so bad that it didn't sell well and it just had too high system requirements and for its time it was just too it was just too much for people to handle or for the computers to handle at the time so i feel like windows 7 makes a lot more sense in s tier so i have a love hate relationship with windows 8.1 um right off the bat it is way harder to use of course windows 8 was something else but windows 8 just in general was way harder to use than windows like 7 for example and for the desktop users windows 8 focused way too much on the tablet user interface and it kind of lacked features for the desktop operating or like for desktop features like who needs like all these preloaded apps like who needs sports like a lot of this you can do on the web like a lot you can look at the news on the web you can look at the weather on the web you can look at the sports on the web it focused too much on the tablet user interface this was definitely without a doubt very very tablet user friendly but for desktops, for desktop users, and maybe some laptop users, this was not friendly at all. If you didn't have a touchscreen, this was quite possibly the worst operating system of all time. Like, this, the start screen makes a lot more sense on a touchscreen, like a Surface Pro. I own a Surface Pro, and my, I use it on Windows 8.1. It works so well, but... For desktop, op like I don't want Windows 8.1 on my desk. On this computer, I don't want Windows 8.1. It doesn't make any sense. It's just not intuitive for desktop users. Like for example, if I go to the corner, why does it? Why do I have to go to the corner and then go down for the charms menu? And honestly, this charms menu is not useful for desktop users. I mean, you have your Windows button right there. And for search, I mean, you might as well, instead of going here and here and then here, you might as well just click the start uh, button on your keyboard and then just start typing. I mean, it's usable, but you might as well just use Windows 7. Desktop users just had a terrible time using this operating system. Like, why? Why do you have to click this button to go to all apps? Like, I can't... Every, this, there's no reason for the start menu to take up this much space. And it makes multitasking just so much harder than it has to be. For for tablets, yeah, this is great. But for tablets, yes, this like excels in almost everything tablets use. But for desktop users, it doesn't make that much sense. I mean, someone someone could argue that the apps could be useful, but you usually the computers are for programs, not really for apps. I'm gonna put it on D. The majority of people who use Windows, they use it for computers, they use it for desktops. They use it for laptops, not tablets. So I don't know what approach Microsoft was trying to make. Maybe they thought Apple, their success was, they were going, they were super successful with their iPhones and iPads. Maybe they wanted to expand upon that, but they just did it in the wrong way. I don't like this operating system. The whole concept of Windows 10 is, I mean, it has potential. It lacks on both sides, the desktop and the tablet side of Windows 10. For example, Windows 10 is not as intuitive when it comes to tablet. Uh, I'll show you, but it's not as intuitive as Windows 8.1 when it becomes when it comes to tablet use. But for desktop use, it's just too bloated and it's just it's so slow. So yeah, I haven't used Windows 10 in like two years. I mean, obviously I've been using it on virtual machines, but my experience with Windows 10 was completely awful back then. I've done, I've, I've been keeping up with the updates on Windows 10. It's still bundled with a bunch of bloatware. Like it still updates randomly. The start menu is un, un, it's just big for no reason. Like why? There's, look at how much bloatware there is. This is just, this is just, this just makes your computer slow. So yeah. Um, anyways, Microsoft Edge. It's a bit limited when you think about it. You can't really add extensions to it. And um, 
yeah, uh, so compatibility with the websites is okay, but like, overall, you can't really get extensions for this, and the whole engine of Edge is just not compatible with a couple of websites like YouTube. I, it's, it's, I mean, it works, but like, it's just, why not download Chrome instead? That's the, that's the thing. I mean, of course, there's a Chromium-based Edge being made right now, but, like, come on. Like, why is this, it shouldn't be this slow, like, why? And I've noticed so many glitches with Windows 10. I mean, it's not as bad as like Windows ME, but like, there's some glitches and that that are happening, and it's it shouldn't be like this. Also, Cortana. Yeah, I can understand. Some people might like this. It's just like the desktop gadgets. It's like either you like it or it's either you hate it. Personally, I have never used Cortana, and honestly, it just gets in the way for me. <coughs> but there are some good additions though. You can actually add multiple desktops to this, um, so let's say you can, you can have some programs running on one desktop and then another uh, program being run on this desktop. So it did fix like the issue with um, Windows 8 users for desktop. So it's now a lot more usable for uh, desktop users. It's way more usable for desktop users. Oh yeah, so there's also the addition of tablet mode. Oh man, what is this? So. I am not understanding the taskbar. Um, all right, so, oh my God, it's slow. So yeah, this looks pretty similar to Windows 8, but when you dive deeper, it's just not as intuitive. Like these buttons are honestly not really good for tablet use. I feel like if they just literally just took Windows 8 start menu and just copied and pasted it to Windows 10, that would be perfect. There was really no changes that needed to be made. Uh, in the Windows 8.1 start menu uh, that needed to be made for Windows 10, but they just changed it anyways. Like, honestly, I would rather slide my finger upward or downward, I don't know. Uh, I would rather slide my finger to go to my all apps menu. Why do I have to click these buttons? Additionally, why do I have this taskbar here? Like, I don't really need this taskbar if I'm using a tablet. It doesn't really make that much sense. Like, it's just there, and it's always there. And let's say I'm launching an app. The, the taskbar is always there, and it really doesn't need to be there. You have your gestures. I mean, maybe it's easier to use, but, like, the gestures, it's just, it's just, um, you can use those instead. So, like, all you have to do is just, you know, drag your hand downward, and you're done. That's, you get so used to that on Windows 8.1. I really don't see, I don't really see a use for this start button right here. It doesn't really make that how much of sense. And I don't know what this back thing is, like, Come on, this wasn't necessary. Cortana, okay, that's great. Uh, task view. Yeah, so this shows, like, base this is basically, you know, multitasking. Um, but literally half of this isn't necessary. And also, what is this? This, like, why is the time here? I would rather just use the charms menu. Like, why is the taskbar always here? It doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. It's not as intuitive. It's a lot more tapping than in Windows 8.1, where everything is just more intuitive i know i'm nitpicking right here but like it just doesn't feel i feel like just windows 8.1 is better for tablet use um which is why i don't really want to use windows 10 when it comes to tablets um but for the desktop i mean this is still a problem the start menu is just there's too much going on in the start menu now of course you can just ignore all of that but because it's just there is itself is annoying so yeah, and I can I see myself having so many problems with the start menu. Sometimes it just freezes, it crashes. I have to restart my computer, and sometimes it won't even open. Like, look at this. Why? I'm clicking search. I mean, if I do that, it could automatically search up for search. But look at how much is what's happening here. Like, you have your all. Oh, like, I don't even think this was all necessary. There's just too much happening now. What is this? What is this? What is this? This isn't this. You don't. What's this? I, I really don't see a use for this. Um, additionally, yeah, there's Cortana. If you wanted to use that, sure, fine. Um, you got settings. I mean, a shortcut to settings. That's, I'm mean, actually, honestly, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, the start menu, honestly, I might be, it might sound like I really hate it, but honestly, the start menu is not that bad. I just prefer Windows 7s because honestly, this all these tiles on the right it's just not necessary this is the new way of pinning your uh pinning your programs and your apps and everything 
you put all the right pull the things you need on the right and all your all programs menus on the left i prefer the way where all your pin programs are just on one side and then you have a button to go to all your programs i feel like that makes more sense but i don't know this start menu is just way too big um but yeah i hate the bloatware i hate the random updates i hate like how slow it, it can be sometimes and if you want to uninstall the apps, unlike Windows 8.1, where you uninstall all the apps, they're just gone. With Windows 10, you uninstall the apps, and they reinstall after an update. It's annoying. It's really, really annoying. So, I'll give Windows 10 a B tier, because it definitely has some potential. All, there's also updates that make it better over time. But as it is right now, it's just a frustrating experience. And with the, with the, with the abundance of bloatware on this machine... And the random updates, there's definitely some problems that can be addressed in future updates. Which is why I want to put it on B tier, because for it to be A tier and S tier, it wouldn't make any sense. Because it's not super good, but it's it's just okay. So, that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This took a long time, just like three hours. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, comment, like, and subscribe. Sell out stuff. Okay, uh, bye.